everyone, this is Dan Fink, Commodore of the uh, MCSA. Uh, he is huge into craft beer. Uh, big fan of beer. Uh, Dan, can you tell us a little bit about what your favorite types of beers are? I know we, we've wow. actually been we've been to a couple places together now up in Tonka, and then uh, we went to Melms, right? And they sponsor the MCSA uh, National Championship, and you pick some great beers for that. How do you pick a beer for for a national championship? Let's start with that one. How do you pick a beer? Like, what what do you look? Oh, for? well, you know, most people. I'm gonna scoot over here a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Like most people are, they fit into like the amber or a light, little bit lighter beer. They're not gonna do your stouts. They're not gonna do a triple IPA, but they like a, a beer that has a little bit more grain to it. Maybe. Uh, Maybe some little bit more hops, not too much. I found uh, I find that women, in particular, fit into either one or two categories when it comes to craft beer. They're either very much into IPAs, and that's rare because uh, most women don't do not like IPAs or hoppy beers. But a lot of women I find like a stouts or they like darker beers. And I, I find that to be very interesting. I just like to make a point that my favorite types of beers are stouts or darker beers. Right. So, like, my wife likes uh, a darker beer, like a Scottish ale. Uh, one that's not too amped up with alcohol, but has a lot of flavor. Maybe a little sweeter instead of drier. But uh, she does like uh, beers. I, I, I throw a couple at her and say, here, try this out. But I know she does not like a, a IPA. So you're trying to find, <laughs> so you're trying to find a beer that is drinkable, right? For, for no. Uh, well, what do you mean for me personally? Well, no, for a regatta, if you go and pick. Oh a beer well, for a yeah, you I, need I, it. I, I find one that I think most people would enjoy. So I would definitely be on the, this side of the scale, a lighter side of the craft brew scale. But for you, what do you initially go for? Me? Yes. My palate's all over. I didn't start that way. I was. Uh, if you, if you talk to me about beer 10 or 15 years ago, I was, uh, I would like porters or uh, something a little sweeter. And now I've gravitated past, uh, say, the darker beers uh, to all the way to triple IPAs to, uh, I like the stouts. I like uh, barrel-aged beers, particularly if they're in rum or outdone bourbon, barrel-aged beers i've tried a lot of different beers um and you can take and you can taste the difference between all those i absolutely i is. have trouble like i can taste the difference in beers but i can't tell you why they're different or what the, what makes it different i my friend is a, brew, a home brewer and he's been doing it for over 20 years and him and i were looking at going into business together and making and, and doing our own craft beer and so on and we've visited a lot of places in our palates and judge we judge beers when we go out just between ourselves and we say yeah this one or that one or mediocre or whatever but uh, we can kind of we sense the the grain build we look at the yeast that was used if it's uh, uh, kind of funky or too weird or whatever so uh, honestly to find a really good craft beer is it can be a little bit difficult at times there's a lot of right. mediocre stuff and some terrible stuff too yet but it's gotten a lot better than it used to be so my palate has ranged where I hated stouts and stuff to where I'll drink any kind of beer now and I've been gravitating into Belgium's now and starting to uh, experiment with that type of beer whether it be a double triple or quad interesting if you were to pick any, like any beer that is really pumped up right now, um, what beer would that be that you haven't tried yet? What beer would that that you haven't tried yet? What's that one beer that everyone's talking about that? <laughs> I I don't follow that scene that closely. Oh really? No, I'm not a I'm not on the I'm not rating beers. You're not I'm like not, Untapped or anything. No, like I'm not on Untapped, and so. If, if it's going to be uh, local beers, what, the hottest thing right now that's going on in our market is what's called milkshake beers. And so what they're doing is they're making IPA, uh, milkshake IPA beers. 
So that may sound funny, but what it, all it is is they're taking dextrose, which is a sugar, and they're putting it into uh, the recipe near the end, and it it will cloudy up the beer. Right. And um, so you might have heard of a milkshake stout. That's probably seven years ago already. That was one of the first um, craft beers that was was using dextrose to, to amp it up in that manner and, and create a different profile. But now they're doing it with IPAs and then they're adding fruit into the beer to give it a, a, a fruity, milkshake-y kind of thing. Interesting, interesting. I don't know if I've ever had a milkshake, you know, stout or anything. So that, the whole brew thing, where all of a sudden the idea catches on and then they're all doing it. And I that's saw one the latest glitter. thing is, is I, yeah, glitter. One had glitter the other day. It was like food grade glitter. How can glitter yeah. be food grade? You know? <laughs> like, uh, there was another one. The guys well, were dumping you know. boxes of Fruit Loops in the fermenter. Like, oh my goodness, what, what's going on here? I'm not, you know, I, I can drink. I drink anything. But, uh, you know, I appreciate people that really have a palate for beer and that can. can well, like a Belgian, for instance, they'll use. Uh, Mediterranean fruits, right? They're like putting figs and dates in the, into the into the mix, and those beers are very tasty beers. If you uh, haven't ever tried a quad, uh, try one. Uh, not all Belgian beers are sours. I don't particularly like sour beers, which are gauche and, and those t styles of beers. I'm not a sour beer fan by any means, but uh, uh, but the Belgians that are not sour based but are just regular based beers are very tasty beers, for sure. Hmm, interesting. Well, that's great. Um, How about this brew? What about this brew? Tell us a little All bit. All right, about so like right here, I've got myself a Stevens Point pistachio nut brown ale. So they actually use pistachios. They do. You get a bag of pistachios for like $30, well, right? Stevens Point is one of the oldest breweries in the nation. It was, it was started up in the 1848 zone. Point beer. Right. And, and they're still going. They're a union brewery. And I've been and visited them while they're producing beer. They do a lot of contract brewing. And then they come up with uh, interesting beers like this. Um, and they generally are build, building beers for the masses. like simple beers I call them but this one was interesting with pistachio nuts it's got a different kind of flavor to can, it can I have a little can, just sure. pour me a little I'll, I'll give you let me give you my expert opinion first and uh, then you can actually uh, correct me kind of like in sailing like I'm gonna tell you what's going on and you're gonna actually tell me what's going on all right I smell things when I first oh <laughs> and then, you, and then it kind of hits the palate, and it's good. Like it's an easy drinking. Almost is that caramel or something? Like kind of a caramely. Well, that's a nut brown base. So what they what you have is a. Uh, that's very good, drinkable. You want some more? No, no, no I, I'll stick to the Bud Light. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this particular beer is uh, is an easy going nut brown, but with uh, pistachio nuts uh, flavoring. So uh, it has a nice aroma to it. There's a, almost an amaretto-ish yeah, smell to it. Like Another Tia fella. Maria? Was right. that a thing? Yeah, it kind of... It has a, a different taste to it, for sure, for a nut brown ale. Very good. Very Did you take yourself? No, from our pals up in central Wisconsin, oh, Stevens Point. Smoke. Point beer. Yeah. Chris, do you like point beer? Sure. You have a, like a point special? I, I love that. Really? It was a cool red can. <laughs> really? Yeah, we got big, good trades out of it. The only time I have point beer is when I go to the plaza on uh, down, like University of Wisconsin Madison downtown, right off of State Street, kind of a couple blocks from it, and you have a plaza burger, and we all, they have point beer like on the tap, and so we just order that and have a couple plaza burgers. That's the only time I drink point beer. Anyways. What a delicious beer. Yeah, there you go, see? 
So Ronnie tried uh, himself a little bit, something different. I did. It was very good. Uh, normally, I don't drink Bud Light. I'll drink, uh, you know, something like a stout. Um, I, I stick to, like, the stouts or the porters, but uh, um, I was a big amber guy for a while. Um, but now I'm just kind of like stouts and porters because, I don't know, I just don't rile up my stomach, I guess, as, as much as kind of those heavy wheat beer type deals. This is very good. I, I, I could have a couple couple of those. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, anything else you'd like to mention about beer before uh, we cut off here? Oh, well, I think, personally, I think the consumer is really benefiting from the craft beer situation uh, because of the variety of things that are going on. Everybody's experimenting with different types of Kind of like sailors and or sail makers in the MC. There's class. so much. There is so <laughs> much experimentation going on that it's, some of it's very good, uh, very good beers. So I say, you know, open up your senses a little bit, try something different. Um, would you pay twenty dollars for a bomber of beer? It, yes, I would. If it depends. Like what's it, like these triple like hops. Um, things out of Iowa or whatever, like people will pay a, an enormous amounts of money for like a bottle of beer. I think, well, like Central Waters in Wisconsin makes, they're known for barrel aged beers around the country. That's their specialty. They make um, barrel aged beers that are sell for $20 a bomber, and uh, they are incredibly rich and smooth and the flavor there's like four or five fra uh, flavor layers into the beer along with the, the whatever the barrel was that it was uh, Asian whether it be a bourbon or whiskey or mm -hmm. rum and um, you, you just have a little snifter of this of this beer because it's it's just like totally rich and it's very delicious uh, but also very amped up with alcohol. If you right. look at it, 10, 11, maybe 12 percent, if not more. But, but uh, no, the, those are special brews that are aged for a while, and uh, you just savor them. If you ever go to one of those beer and wine shows or beer and food shows, like the one they have in Madison, like what do you? How do you approach those things? Because it seems like, okay, you got a thousand different beers. And you want to try a good amount. Like, how do you get through that? I mean, or do you just have, like, a couple high-velocity beers and all of a sudden you're, you're toast? You know, I, I, I don't get it. How, how do you do it? How do you cleanse your palate? What, like, well, uh, or are they just drinking the, fests? I, I well, the, the, beer, the beer festivals that... that they have all the vendors lined up. Uh, there's been interesting beers that come out of those that my friend and I discovered. Um, there's some brewers that do exceptional beers. So you just try a little bit, you know, a little, a little sampler, a little sp splash of beer. You should be able to tell right away what's going on with that beer without having to drink the a whole 12 ounces or so. So you just do a couple ounces at a time. Um, and uh, maybe no, that's sip of water in between or something, try another one. But a uh, good way to, to check out a lot of different brew styles. And, and there are breweries that are better at this than others, for sure. Definitely. Definitely. Who's making a point? You Me. Are. See, here's, a, here's another point person that I'm recognizes home. point beer. We're doing it we're at right now, uh, recording. You want to be in on this? That's <laughs> no, all right. See? That's perfect. That's great. There's a fella that understands the Point Brewery. So how do you know about Point Beer? I, I, I drank it. I've I driven past it. I, I See? do a lot of business up in Wisconsin. Oh. I was pretty close to it uh, three weeks ago. There you go. You know? See? Point Beer. Good, beer. Good anyway, stuff. Sorry. No, no problem. That you want to interview? Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> He's a vampire. Well, that's okay. Awesome. Well, we're gonna we'll interview you yeah, then why don't you do him? after um, after 
after like a couple races, or are you doing Zen to You or anything like that? Or? I'm only doing the U. I'm not doing the Masada. Okay, so we'll we'll interview get you him, after. Get him as a new person in yeah. the class. Why well, join the class? I left mine up north. Yeah. Can we can we talk to you after Zen to You before All we right. take off? You want to cut this off? Yeah. Okay. okay. Hold on one second. Um, hey, uh, thank you very. No, no, no. We'll, well come on back. Right there. We're, um, thank you very much for uh, joining uh, Dan Fink. Dan, beers with Dan, craft beers with Dan. Craft beer with Dan. Uh, MCSA uh, Commodore. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we look forward to seeing more beer uh, news and trends from Dan in the future. And Absolutely. Also, uh, enjoy, we're going to enjoy seeing him out there sailing at the MCSA Midwinter Championship. So thank you very much. Have a great night. Take care.